Welcome to Art Starts Explores, our province of play. Are you ready to get creative with us this week? Let's review our three basic rules that guide us through our exploration and play. Rule one is respect. We want to respect ourselves, anyone we're making with, our tools and making space, and the lands and waterways where we're making. How can you practice respect when you explore, play, and make? Rule two is no expectations. If we're not expecting something to turn out good or bad, we're open to it going in a whole bunch of different ways. And that means that all respectful, creative explorations are great, regardless of what it ends up looking like. Try to do things you've never tried before and ask yourself, what will happen if I... Rule number three is nothing is for keeps. Everything we make together is a test, or a draft, or creative playtime. We're just trying things out. What can you make or try today and then take apart or recycle? What can we learn by making and not keeping? These are our three rules for when we explore together every week. Okay, what will we explore together this week? Okay, my watch says it is 11 o'clock, so let's get started. Welcome everyone to uh, our second week of Our Stars Explorers Circles. My name is Kay Slater, and I'm the gallery coordinator and preparator at Art Starts and Schools. So because I'm, um, I'm learning how to do this alongside all of you at home, I haven't been doing, or I have been doing this workshop now for uh, 10, 10 different themes, but every time um, I run these workshops, I learn something a little new. So last week when we started Circles, I decided I would put out um, a sticky note that said, these are some of the tools that I have at my workspace that I might be using today. We might not use all of them, but if you happen to have these um, around and you want to follow along, this can be helpful for you to be able to go and find those before we get started. And because this is live, you, you can't necessarily pause it, but you can come back to the video later when you have these supplies. So I'm asking, do you have a piece of paper? Maybe you have multiple pieces of paper, especially if you're going to the recycling bin, back of envelopes, back of cereal boxes. Those are all really great uh, things to draw on. A mark making tool. So when I say mark making tool, I mean anything that you can make a mark with. Why don't I just say pen, or pencil, or marker? Is because all of those things are mark making tools. As long as you can make a mark with it, right? Any kind of mark, that is a mark making tool. And sometimes, depending on the material that we're using, it's not necessarily just a marker. If we had a piece of clay or we were playing in the dirt, our finger might make a mark. And so in that case, in that circumstance, when we're playing with mud or dirt or something that we can leave an impression, our finger becomes a mark making tool. But for this week, because paper is the thing we're gonna be using, the mark making tool would be something like a pencil or a marker or a pencil crayon. And then finally, a pair of scissors. And um, if, you've, if you've made along or explored with me today, you know that scissors are uh, only if you have them because I am a super fan of just ripping things up. And if you've never had the opportunity or permission to rip things up, that's one of the other great things about grabbing things from your recycling bin is that somebody was already going to get rid of it. So you probably don't even need permission to uh, rip those things up because it's already garbage. And so if you don't get the chance to rip things off, up very often, this is the opportunity for you to see what happens if you rip the paper. And so then you wouldn't need scissors. All right, so those are some of the things that I have as we are going to start exploring circles. So just like last week, where we had a warm up with circles, what we did was we drew a whole bunch of circles and then we looked at the circles. But this time, rather than drawing um, a bunch of circles and looking at them, we're gonna use the circles to create texture. 
And so that's just, that's uh, basically a different way of saying coloring something in or adding details to something. And so I'm gonna take, I'm gonna draw a couple of different things that, um, that we can try and practice using circles to, um, to add texture. So I'm gonna think of a piece of clothing and I'm just gonna draw the outline of a piece of clothing because we're gonna color it in. I'm gonna draw something that uses water and I'm gonna draw something that has hair. And so the things that I draw, if you wanna exactly copy, you absolutely can copy everything that I'm doing or maybe you come up with something else. Okay, so I've got kind of a t-shirt, maybe it's a long sleeve sweater, but it's something that goes on your torso or your upper body. And that's what I'm drawing. You maybe did some pants, a skirt, a dress, overalls, a hat, anything that you wanted to draw that you can wear on your body is great. And you see, I just drew the outline. Now I'm going to choose something that uses water. And so I think I'm gonna draw two things to give you an example. The first one is I'm going to draw, can you see what that is? Yep, I drew a pot. So a pot for water. And you know what, thinking again about uh, a container, I'm also gonna draw a glass. So just a glass that uh, water could go into. So just the outside. See all the circles that I'm using? If you watched uh, last week, we talked about how circles, when you look at them from different um, angles, whether it's looking at it from head on or looking at its side, see the circle here, how it gets squished when I turn it? That's how we can draw looking at the side of um, objects that are round or have a circle in them. So those are the things that we could put water in. And then the last one, I'm going to do something that uh, has hair. And you know what, again, I'm, I think I'm gonna draw two things. Maybe I should draw a pair of pants over here. Just so, oh, that's really skinny pants. That's okay. Remember, all ideas are good ideas. And they don't have to look perfect, right? This is just us practicing. And if you draw a shirt here that you don't like and you wanna draw it again, that's cool too, right? Here we go, there's a t-shirt. Maybe you don't like the V-neck. Maybe you wanna try it with a circle. That's okay, we're just practicing. And especially if you're just using paper that was in the recycling bin. It doesn't matter how good they turn out. Draw it as many times as you want. The only kind of rule is just that we're trying to have an outline here. So whatever you want to draw. So the last thing for hair, I think I'm going to draw a face. I'm going to give it some eyes. I'm going to give it a mouth and I'm going to give it big ears. There you go. Just big ears. I think I'm also going to draw, you know what, you know what um, animal I really like that has a lot of hair and that some people who have these dogs, or sorry dogs, well, you know it's a dog, but they have this animal and they will do, um, they'll go to the hairdresser and they'll make really um, wild hairstyles. Can you, can you guess what kind of dog I'm trying to draw? Oh, I might go off the page here. That's okay, it's just gonna have funny, funny little legs. Oh, I kinda want the poofs here. Oh, that's all right. Right, see I drew a line here? That's okay, we're just practicing. It's gonna have little funny stumpy legs because I, I drew really close to the bottom of the page. That's okay. And then, uh, how did legs go? And then more poofs back here, and then their paws kind of come up here. And then, then a tail, and then another poof up here. There we go. <laughs> did you guess poodle? Kind of looks like a poodle. This is what happens when you draw really close to the page. I could have taken a second page over here and kept going, but that's all right. We're not trying to make it look perfect. We're more just trying to check out circles. And again, you can try it again and again. If your first um, dog or animal or person or bear or whatever you had um, that has hair, and maybe it's you want to do an imaginary thing that has hair, that's fine. You could draw it again and again on your page, right? There is no right way. We're just trying it. Um, out to see what happens. Oh, see my circle wasn't perfect? That's okay. Okay, so I'm gonna change up colors so you can see what I'm talking about. What we're gonna do is we're gonna warm up by putting circles inside these containers to see what happens. So I'm using markers so that it's really, really clear on the camera so you can see what's 
what's happening when I color it in. But you could be using pencil crayons or pencils um, or crayons to do it. You could do the outlines and markers and then use the crayons. What happens when you mix and match different things? If I was to use uh, my pencil crayon now, um, how do you think it would be different? I'm not going to because I know in previous work weeks it doesn't look quite as clear when I use pencil crayons, but you can. Find out what happens when you use a pencil crayon at home and then let me know in the comments. Okay, so let's do our warm up with circles. First, I'm going to just fill this with circles. I'm not really going to think about it very much. Big looping circles, maybe some closed circles. I'm just going to draw a bunch of circles to see what happens. There is no right or wrong way to fill your object with a circle. You can go fast, you can go slow, you can go big, you can go small, you can, you can do whatever you like. If you wanna see how fast you can practice circles, that's cool too, right? And you can go inside of the circles, you can do whatever you want, but when you are finished filling or coloring in your object, with circles, take a second and look at what you did. What do you notice? Does it look like a specific kind of fabric or material? Does it look like there's a pattern that somebody just drew on this t-shirt? Does it make it look warm or cold? Is this something that an adult would wear or a young person would wear? Is this something that a dog would wear? Do the circles make the shirt, the t-shirt, or the, the sweater that we had went before it was colored in, look different or look like it was made uh, to be worn by somebody in, sp in particular when we add circles? Let's, let's keep going. Let's color in another one of um, our clothing objects. So if you did, did another one, or you can just watch me. And this time, I'm only going to draw the tiniest little circles I possibly can. And you can do that as well. Okay. So because I had a smaller shirt and I was using a marker, a lot of my circles, do you notice? They're filled in. I didn't color them in. It was just because the kind of marker that I used. If I was to draw this again using brown and just did a whole bunch of small circles, I don't know if you can see that as, as well with my camera, but try it on your page. If you have access to a marker and a crayon or a crayon and a pencil crayon, what's different when you try and draw little circles with a pencil crayon or a pencil versus a marker. Okay, so looking at this one compared to this one, I kind of feel like maybe this sweater is made out of wool, right? Maybe something that has kind of already a curly texture to, to it. Or maybe this feels like it's a little bit softer than this one. Maybe this one would be really scratchy. Or maybe this one is falling apart right? Maybe this one looks like it's actually got a whole bunch of holes in it. Or maybe this one looks like it's got a whole bunch of holes in it because there's all these marks here. What do you think? How do you think changing the size of the circle affects how the item or how the article of clothing looks? Let's try it one more time on this third one here. And I'm just going to go as large as possible. Biggest circles I possibly can make. Here we go. So I used circles to color in all three of these objects and they were all shirts, right? They were all things that we wore on um, the top of our bodies. Or maybe maybe you wear your shirts differently, but for, uh, for me, I usually wear my shirts on the top of my body. And so each one of these had circles, but they look so very different. Really big circles, really small circles, and whatever circles, wherever they were gonna go. I want to do one more and what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill in these pants but I'm going to do something called uniform circles and by uniform circles I mean that I'm going to draw them exactly or as close to exactly the same size as I can 
with the same amount of spacing between each circle and see how that affects um, the clothing down here. And you can try that as well. So it looks completely different again, right? Still using circles. Each one of these we colored in using circles. What did you notice about me drawing this one compared to all the rest of them? For me, I noticed that when I had to draw the uniform or the same circles in the same size, I had to go much slower because I wanted to make sure, I wanted to think about each circle as I drew it. Whereas this one, you'll remember, I drew it really fast. I didn't really think about it. I kept talking while I was doing it. I stopped talking when I was doing this one. Now, if we look at it, how does it look different? This one kind of looks like maybe it's a netting now, right? Like if you've ever seen um, like stockings or fishnets or like a, even just like a, a a fish net, right? Like, you know, where you go and uh, get fish, it kind of looks like there are threads that are going like this, but I used circles for it. It doesn't really look like a pair of pants that you would normally see. Maybe it's scales, it kind of looks like scales, like a fish of a scale. Sorry, scales on a fish, whoops. It's okay, mistakes are cool um, for when we're exploring like this. So maybe if I wanted to draw a fish person, I would make sure that all the texture that I used was all these uniform circles to kind of look like scales. And once we learn these things, when we start coloring in these different things and just try things to see what happens, all of a sudden we learn that the next time maybe we wanted to draw a fish, here we go, we would know that it's probably going to look more like a fish if we had uniform circles than if we just colored it all in with one color. And we didn't know that until we started to explore with circles. And I just picked three things that, you know, I picked three things at the beginning of the clothing, the hair, the water and the hair, but you could try coloring in anything with circles and see what you learn. Okay, so that was clothing. And if you wanna keep coloring your clothing, or if you're working with somebody else and they, uh, they wanna keep coloring um, or trying with circles, they can totally do that and then uh, we can go ahead. Um, also, if you're just not done and you wanna just keep going, you're also welcome to turn off the video and then come back to us later when the video is archived. There are no rules, you explore at your own pace today. Okay, so now we had this cup of water. I'm gonna use circles again, only this time, I'm not going to fill the whole thing with it with circles because I think I want to pretend like the water only goes halfway. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to copy a shape that I already see in this drawing. And so I'm going to copy that circle. What does it look like now? I only drew one circle in there. Do we get the idea that it's half full? If I had drawn the circle up here versus down there, and if you have a cup, try it out or draw the Draw the shape multiple times. Here, I'm gonna do another glass over here so we can look. Or you can do it yourself. You don't even have to look at the screen. You could draw your own cup and see what happens. Or you could draw it one way and if you're making with somebody else, they could draw it one way and um, then you can compare how it looks. Okay, for this one, I'm gonna draw it all the way up here. And for this one, I'm gonna draw it all the way down. So without even coloring it in, just by making three different circles, it kind of looks like there's only a little bit of water for this one, and that the glass is about half full there, 
And then I would say it's almost half based on this shape here, but you see my circle, it kind of came up over here. So it looks like we're looking at the, uh, the water or the cup in a different direction, or maybe it's just a different shape of cup. What do you notice when you're drawing these? And even though I said I was drawing a cup, do you see how drawing them quickly, each, each cup was a little bit different? Try it out, see what looks different. Compare yours to the other people that you're making with. And if you're making alone right now, that's okay too. You can make all of these things and then you can go and share with a friend or a caregiver, family member, classmate, teacher, and you could challenge them later to explore with you by asking them to do something made out of water and see what happens when they do it. Try not to give them too many instructions or don't even show them what you did first so that when you're all finished, you can both compare what you did and see how you, you each approach the problem or the drawing differently. Okay, so the other thing that I kind of notice about drawing just the one circle like this is that it feels like the water's really still, right? So there, it's probably not pop or fizzy water because there, there's no movement. It's really, really still, it's a drawing. If I wanted to keep using circles, but I wanted to show that maybe this water is carbonated, how could we add circles? Would we add it under the circle or over the circle? Would we add the same size of circles? Let's try that out. I wanna see if adding the same size of circles to this one makes the water look like it's fizzy. What do you think? Does that make it look like it's fizzy? There's no right or wrong answer. If you think that's how it looks or you think it looks fizzy, then, then great. For me, it kind of feels like it doesn't even look like water anymore. It kind of just looks like the cup has a bunch of circles on the outside of it. Or maybe somebody's swirling a glass around and so the water is moving around the cup. Okay, so that's how it looked like when we did the same circle. What if we did a bunch of smaller circles now? Okay. So it kind of looks like maybe there's some movement in there because there's all these holes now. So like the air bubbles, if you're, if you're ever looking at the side of pop or fizzy water in a cup, you'll notice that there's the bubbles there. But to me, it kind of looks like cheese right? Just these, because it's still very stationary. It's still staying in one place. How could we add circles to make it look like there's some motion, like there's something happening? Next time you have a glass of pop or fizzy water or somebody else does, take a look at it and see what you notice. What I've noticed is that when I pour a glass of pop, the bubbles don't seem to look like they're going down to the bottom. The liquid is poured in to the cup, but then the bubbles are trying to escape out. So what if we put bubbles above where we had put the water now to make it look like there were bubbles escaping? All right. So to me, it kind of looks like the bubbles that were poured into here are trying to get out of the glass, which creates some motion or some movement. But even though we use circles here, it, st it doesn't look like the, the, the circles of these pants are trying to escape away, right? So it's, it's about the context or the idea of the container that you've created and people going, oh, I get it. It's not like the water's trying to escape, it's the bubbles that are trying to escape. But check it out. If we were to then use circles by the pants, does it look like the circles are trying to escape? Kind of looks like the pants are thinking if we added a bubble over here. What are the pants thinking? Maybe they're thinking of circles, <laughs> right? Check it out, see what happens. What happens if we color outside of the lines? Does it still look like the thing that we were trying to color in the paper or color in our picture? Looks like the fabric or does it end up doing something else? Right, remember, none, none of this is for keeps. We're just seeing what happens if. And if you come up with another idea that you wanna try with the circles, go for it. To me, it kind of looks like maybe this is a dirty shirt now, right? The shirt is so dirty that the, the circles are coming right off of the shirt. Or maybe that it's got such a scratchy material that the scratchy curls of the material are escaping from the shirt. 
We wouldn't have known that until we tried. We're just seeing what happens if. All right, so now that we remembered all of these circles over here, it's the idea that it's trying to escape. If I had a pot of boiling water, and so let's, let's say this is a clear pot, and again, we'll put the water in right here. This is a still, a still glass of water. How can we make the water look like it's boiling over here? If you feel, or if um, the adult with you, it feels like, they, like it's safe, next time that you're boiling water, you can um, ask them to, to let you look. You don't wanna touch an, uh, a stove or an oven. You don't wanna get too close to boiling water because it's hot. But maybe if you've never been able to go up and look at the boiling water itself, you've noticed that the water does something when the water gets hot and it turns into steam, right? So that's what happens when you, when you have water and you make it really, really hot, it turns into steam. What happens when you make water really, really, really cold? It turns into ice, right? This could, we don't actually know, maybe this is frozen water that we have here, right? We haven't put it on an element yet, we haven't got it hot yet. This could be ice, we don't know. We need to add more details. So we're gonna add some um, circle details to make it show like it's boiling water. So boiling water usually has a bunch of bubbles over the water. So I'm going to put a bunch of bubbles here, right? A whole bunch of circles. I didn't put it down at the bottom. I just showed that the top of the water is boiling. I'm also gonna show the water as circles as steam, right? So again, circles, but I use them in different shapes. I made it a little looser because steam tends to be a little bit bigger. How can you draw steam using just circles? We could put some circles under here to show that it's boiling down here as well. Because remember a dot, especially if you're using a marker, kind of looks like a circle, right? So just drawing a whole bunch of dots is kind of like drawing a whole bunch of tiny filled in circles to a surface. And there we go, we've got a pot of boiling water just using circles. All right, now let's try hair. If we were gonna draw hair on any of these using just circles, what have we learned so far? Well, we've learned that really tight circles look like kind of uh, tight material, like wool. So if we were to do really tight circles as the hair, on top of one of these heads. Here, I'm gonna do it in multiple, there we go. Kind of looks like they have really, really curly hair, right? And I did them very uniform, right? Just like this one where they're all exactly the same. I did it, I did the circles by loops, right? So looping, 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 all in one line. So there, you still get all these circles, but you don't have to go circle, circle, circle. You could just do a curly line, circle, circle, circle. Whoop. It's okay if we make mistakes. Circle, 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 right? So the circles just have tails. The circles are just connective. We can still see the circles. Actually, let's try that out. I'm gonna do one more line where I use kind of that curly one line for all the hair. And then on this character here, I'm gonna just do individual circles and close them, so not one line. What do you notice that's different? It still looks like they have curly hair, right? But this one, it looks like they've got little curls, and this one looks like they've got big curls. Or maybe, if we were to fill it in, maybe they've got lots of little curls that just end up having a very round texture to the outside of their hair, right? Let's do one more down here. I'm gonna do it in a different color just so we can have a different color. I can do it in green, because green hair, yeah. This one, I wanna have long hair. And so I'm gonna start with the curls again, with the big circles. And you, remember, your circles can look like whatever. What do you notice when you draw circles for hair? <laughs> I think the green color actually really affects this. Kind of makes it look like uh, maybe it's vines. Maybe they have vines for hair. This is something I hadn't done before. I hadn't gone over the circles uh, with the hair over there. So now I'm gonna overlap it. It still kind of looks like there's curly hair here, right? Maybe their hair is made out of leaves because of the color. 
maybe their hair has a whole bunch of braids in it, right? Can you do a braid with a whole bunch of circles? Does it kind of look like a braid when you have a whole bunch of circles? Check it out. Try to draw hair in different ways using just circles. Even if you're tempted to draw uh, with, with lines, add circles afterwards, right? What happens if you add circles to the lines that you drew? But just try it out. Try to just draw the circles. Okay, last but not least is our poodle. And here I'm gonna, dip, I'm gonna grab a different color. Ah, you know what, I'm gonna draw, I'm gonna grab my big stinky purple marker here. And so for this one, I'm gonna do what we learned over here, which was a whole bunch of dots, end up being a whole bunch of circles. And I'm gonna see what happens if I color in my poodle using just dots, just circle dots. I think I'm just gonna draw, I'm just gonna color in the poofs and then leave the outside or the, like where it shaved real close and then leave that empty. Cause you can do it however you want. Maybe you didn't draw a poodle. I said bear before, but maybe you drew a cat or maybe you drew a, a book that has fur on the outside of it. Anything that has hair, right? Anything, it could be an animal, it could be a human, but it could be something else that you make up here. Okay, so I drew a whole bunch of dots here what does it look like now? To me, it kind of looks like it's so tight. The, the, the curly hair on this dog is so tight that the lines, the dots that I create are, are the little circles in between all the curly hairs. It's so dense. It's so thick. The circles are so compact. They're so on top of each other that you can't even see the circles. And that's how we were able to do the texture of the dog. So we colored in a whole bunch of different shapes using just circles. So the next time you are using a coloring book, you could do that. You could pick one page and at the top of the page, you could draw a circle and then you could decide to draw nut or color in all the page using nothing but circles. And then the next page of the coloring, page, uh, coloring book, you could pick a different shape. You could pick a triangle. You could pick a square. You could pick another circle, but you could decide that you're only going to do all the circles um, that are uniform or the same. How does it make the picture look different? How does it look interesting? What do you end up seeing when you add these different textures? If you want to keep coloring texture, go for it. I'm going to put this over to the side and we're going to try something else, but don't, don't worry. If I'm going, uh, if I'm going on to something else and you want to keep working on, coloring your textures, then you do that, no problem. Okay, so the next thing that I want us to do is if you have another piece of paper, or if you wanna draw on the back of the piece of paper, if you didn't use marker and you can see it all, or if you're like me and I knew my markers were gonna, gonna go through, you can use the other piece of paper that you had a whole bunch of dots on. I think I'm going to use that paper a little later because I like all those marks on it. And I have more paper here, so I'm going to grab a new piece of paper. And this is all recycled paper. I found this, uh, somebody was giving away a whole bunch of this kind of paper, and I knew exactly what I could do uh, by grabbing this paper. So remember, we're not keep, none of this is for keeps. We're just trying things out. Okay, so grab a new piece of paper, grab whatever other mark making tool you have, and what we're going to do is we're just going to draw as many weird shapes as we can. No rules, just try and fill your page with as many weird shapes as you can. Go for it. And your idea of weird might not be the same as somebody else's. If you are making with another adult or a friend or a classmate right now, they're weird might not be your weird or might not be as weird as your weird. What's weird? I've decided that a whole bunch of kind of squiggly shapes is weird. I wanted to close them as well, right? So the shape that you can see that I have an, a start and I have a finish to each one of these. really 
thinking about it, just filling up the space with weird shapes. What is K doing? Why, if we're doing circles, why are we doing weird shapes? And if you're not, if you're not making along, you can, uh, you can start guessing, right? Why, why would I be doing this? Why am I just asking for a whole bunch of weird shapes? If you don't have a piece of paper and a pencil, you could also try drawing some weird shapes in the air. What kind of weird shapes could you make with just your fingers? Okay, I'm gonna do one more. I'm gonna do it in a different color. What other colors do I have here? Oh, I have a red. I'm gonna do one in red. All right. So with this one, I filled up all the space with all these weird shapes. All right, so what I want us to do now is once you have a bunch of uh, squiggly uh, weird shapes on your page, I want you to add a pair of eyes or a single eye to each one of these shapes. So because we're doing circles, this is where we're gonna do our circles again, right? We're gonna start thinking in circles. You could draw an eye where it's just a filled in circle, right? If you think about happy faces, just the circles of the eyes, you could draw um, a circle with another circle around it, like a googly eye for the circle. You could draw a different shape of circle, right? You could draw a shape that was different and then fill it in. However you want to draw your eyes, try drawing an eye on each one of these shapes and see if you can give it a face. Go for it. There's no right or wrong place to put your eyes. Just put a face. Just put a just put an eye somewhere on the on your shape. And you can only you can just do one if you want. And you'll probably know, right? You'll probably know. You'll feel like it's it's kind of easy to figure out where you could put put the eye. Don't think about it too much though. There we go. Okay. So check it out. These were all just blobs before, right? But all of a sudden we just added a circle to them and now they have this personality, right? It kind of looks like each one of these blobs could be alive. Maybe this is a bat. Maybe this is a person, right? Do you see there's like maybe a big ear here? I'm gonna add some teeth to this blob. Um, this one kind of looks like it could be a mask, right? That you tie around and that's where your nose goes. Oh, I didn't do one over here. There we go. This one kind of looks like it could be a dinosaur. Right? I wasn't thinking about it at all before I made it. This one's just funny. This kind of, this kind of looks like uh, a melted giraffe. There we go. Right? With only three legs. And a little tail, there we go. <laughs> right? This one may be another face. There's the teeth down there. There's their nose. They got a big eyebrow horn over here. And then this is, this is their hair. Right? So all I did was add a circle. Added a dot in a circle. And it has so much personality to it before, it even, before I even made the decision to make a creature. So when you want to warm up, if you just wanted to fill a page with a whole bunch of shapes and then add a circle to it, then you, then you can check out the, the, the shape that you made in a different way. Or you could take the shapes, you could make a page of shapes, and then you could give it to a friend and then they give you their page of shapes or a guardian or a teacher or whoever you're making with. Or maybe you're planning to go over to a family member's house as a visit, you could make a page of shapes. And then when you show up and you know, you've taken time to take your jacket off and take your shoes off and say hello to everybody, you can exchange these pieces of paper and see where they put the
the eyes and it might be different than where you would have put the eyes. Okay, so that's using a whole bunch of weird shapes and you can keep going. If you wanna go ahead with me, that's great. Or you can just keep drawing more weird shapes and see what kind of uh, uh, faces or figures or creatures you can make out of just adding a circle as eyes. I'm gonna add, I'm gonna grab another piece of paper. Same thing, you wanna use the same paper, you wanna flip it over to the other side. You don't need a fresh, clean piece of paper every time. It just is easier for me so that you can focus on what I'm making here, but you could absolutely do it on the back of any paper. You could go find another envelope from, the, uh, from your recycling bin, right? Try not to use fresh, uh, clean paper every time. Maybe you find paper that has um, writing on the other side or printer paper that somebody printed something. You can always color on the other side and that's great for these kind of uh, exploring times. Okay, so next thing that I want us to do is I want us to draw some faces. So just like before, instead of finding uh, faces in the figures we make, we're going to draw a bunch of faces. And to begin with, there are no rules at all, but if you have only one piece of paper, what I suggest you do is you only draw your faces on one side of the paper, just because uh, the activity that I wanna encourage you to try afterwards, we're going to, uh, we're gonna wanna use a part of a paper so we can pick, compare some stuff. You could also draw a line through a piece of paper. If you're just using a section of a piece of paper, right? You could draw a line and then you can draw your faces at the top and then leave that space underneath, right? Lots of different ways that you could divide up the paper that you have or the objects that you have to draw on, right? Just leave a little bit of space. And if you have to draw a little smaller than me, maybe, uh, right, like the small circles there, that's okay too. Okay, let's draw some faces. No rules, however you wanna draw some faces. I'm gonna start with some circles because that's how I start drawing faces. And they don't have to be the same. In fact, I really don't want them to be the same. There we go. So I've got some circles. And I'm just going to go ahead and draw some faces. So I'm going to turn off my voice for a second and just draw some faces. And you can do the same. And don't forget, a face can be as easy as two dots and a line. Then you've got your face. Okay, let's go for it. Whatever face you want. And if you only want to draw one face, that's totally fine. You don't have to draw a whole bunch of faces. I just wanted to give you a bunch of examples. You can just draw one. Okay, so I drew a bunch of different faces there. And if you still are drawing faces, don't worry about it. You don't have to rush, you can keep drawing faces. But because I'm only uh, working for an hour today, I'm gonna keep going. So now that we drew those faces, now we are gonna add a rule. And the rule is, is we're gonna try and draw the faces that we already drew only using circles. So I'm going to try and redraw these circle shapes. They're not necessarily going to be perfect. You could trace them if you wanted to just trace the same shapes. That's about right. right. 
doesn't have to be perfect. Oh, whoops, I already did a circle. Okay, so how do I do that neck down there in just a circle? There we go, I've got a circle. Same thing with this one. I've only got a circle there. You know what, I'm gonna change colors so that we can see the differences. So I got the blue here. I think that's, what, that's different enough. Yeah, okay. So some of these things are gonna be really easy because the dots are circles, the ears were circles, the eyebrows were circles, and let's say the mouth was a circle as well. But now we've got this nose. Okay, well, the long part of the nose I'm gonna make as a circle like that, and then I'm gonna do three circles down at the bottom. What's missing? The hair. Okay, so I'm gonna go circle, 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 circle. There you go. So I just use circles. It's almost the same, right? But not quite. Not quite. But kind of the same, right? You'd be surprised at how many circles you can find in a face. Okay, same thing over here. All right, this one, the eyebrows. Okay, I'm gonna try and do really small little circles there. Mm, right, I just had this flat circle. So it's still, it's still a circle, right? Only I took the air out of it and I went. I could be, I could be even more like a circle and I could just draw a bunch of little circles there. I'll do that. I'll put three circles to have that shape. Same thing with the closed eyes. I think I'll draw, I think I'll draw a circle and then I'll draw a line through it, right? So that's the whole idea of it having closed eyes. Maybe I'll draw, maybe I'll, I'll fill those in. It might work, it might not work, right? That's the thing, so these are, these lines here, they could be like half circles, right? You cut them in half, and then you don't have the top part, but we, we, we drew the circle, so how do we make it look like we didn't use the circle? For the, for the nose, I'm gonna do, what am I gonna do? I'm gonna do a whole bunch of small circles again. And then there were the two nostrils. And then for the mouth, I think I'm gonna draw two circles, one circle, two circles. Oh, and then the hair. So same thing as before, but a whole bunch of different circles here. How's it working for you? Is it easy? Is it hard? Were you already thinking about circles before you started drawing your, uh, tried the second part of the rule? Did you, did you guess what I was gonna do? And it could be easier or harder. And remember, it doesn't have to look perfect. We're not going for a good looking drawing right now. We don't want it to look right. We're just trying to see what happens if. What happens if I try drawing this face using circles? Well, that one was easy. So the lips, one circle, two circle, three circles. <laughs> oh, two dots, that's good. Oh, a half circle again. I'm gonna draw, you know what? I'm gonna take two colors because the only rule is that I have to draw a circle. So I'm going to use a different color to complete my circle here. Aha! Right, so I made a circle, but I'm still able to just have the line in one color down here. What else is missing? Oh, this hair. Okay, so this one I'm gonna do big circles here. That was kind of a funny circle. Ah, you know what? I'll just go like this, there we go. Circle over here, circle over here, and then a circle over here. <laughs> this is my favorite so far. Look at those funny lips. Okay, let's keep going. Circle, circle. And yours could be, yours are probably completely different than mine, right? Not only were your faces different, but how you try and draw the circles are going to be different. You know what? This one I think is going to end up looking the most like the one above. It's still a little weird though because I had those flat lines for the eyes there and now it's got kind of these bigger eyes and now it looks like um, this character has a wider expression, right? All of a sudden instead of them having this like happy eye, eyebrow, now it's all mushed together with the eyes and it does look a little bit different. Okay, this last one here, 
everything and draw these little circles. I'm gonna draw, I'm gonna draw a circle over here and then a circle down there for their eyebrow. I'm gonna draw a bunch of little tiny dots. That's something else you could do, right? If we're just drawing circles, what happens if I just draw it all in dots? So for this nose here, I'm gonna draw circles by doing dots, but I'm gonna follow the shape of the nose. Check it out. Circle, 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 circle. Right? So I drew that new nose in circles, even though it what the shape didn't end up looking like a circle, right? So circle for the mouth circle for those ears, and then a whole bunch of really, really tight circles for their hair. And I can go over it, right? Oh, when I draw over with the circles, it ends up looking more like lines than, uh, than little circles. There we go. <laughs> so check it out. We were able to draw a bunch of faces and then draw them again using just circles. And you'll notice that some things that you draw with circles look like the thing you want them to, right? That nose ended up being fine drawing just out of circles. Those eyebrows, those ears, no problem. But trying to draw those puffy lips with closed circles ended up looking kind of funny. And that's okay, right? We're not going for perfect. So however you decided to uh, take uh, do any of these activities at uh, wherever you are watching this week, you did a good job. Even if you were just listening and thinking, if you took your markers and you drew along, you did a good job just by making, just by showing up, just by making yourself available to try these things. Well done. This week, we drew some faces with no rules and using only circles. We drew as many different weird shapes as we could, and that added circles for eyes and came up with a whole bunch of different faces. We practiced going fast and slow, big and small, and used the circles as texture to color in each of our different objects so that we created a different mood, a different action, a different material, Sometimes we created funny ideas out of using the circles. We tried different techniques. And there was no right or wrong way to do any of these. So that is 12 o'clock. That was one hour of exploring circles. I'm going to save this video and then add captions to the bottom of it so that you can share it with your friends. You can re-watch later in the day. If you want to go back and check it out again and pause, you can find it on Facebook. If you drew something that was really cool or even something that wasn't really cool, if you drew something and think it was really, really bad, I want to see it. I want to find out what you tried because remember, there is no bad or good when we're exploring together. Whatever you made was a good job. So if you have permission from an adult or caregiver, or you yourself are an adult and you wanna share what you made today, please feel free to share in our comments. If you have any questions for us, remember Leah is there, but I will also be checking out the questions a little bit later. And we will have one more art making session on circles next week at Saturday, sorry, on Saturday at 11 o'clock. And I would love to see you for our third exploration of circles. See you then. I'm going to leave the video running for another five minutes or so while I clean up because that's really important that we always end our session by cleaning up and putting things away. Um, and then I will see you next week. Thanks so much.